Hello, everyone, and thank you for your interest in our work on how students determine credibility and authority when using Wikipedia. Thanks for joining us today to hear the presentation, Crossing Thresholds, Wikipedia Shaming, Authority Dilemmas Across Educational Stages. I am pleased to be here today and to be joined by my project colleagues to share some of our findings of our research. Today, Chris Sear from OCLC Research will be joining us, as will Rachel Elrod from the University of Florida and Joyce Kasman Valenza from Rutgers University. This project titled Researching Students' Information Choices, Determining Identity and Judging Credibility in Digital Spaces, or RISIC as we fondly refer to the project, was a four-year IMLS-funded research project. We studied fourth grade through graduate school students for a total of 175 participants. For the study, we created simulated Google search results as the study instrument. You can see that this project took a village. We have many colleagues who worked on this project, many from the University of Florida and from OCLC Research, as well as Joyce from Rutgers University. And you can see all of our names on the slide. Now, this is a photo of the RISIC research team at one of our annual face-to-face -face meetings. And you can see that there are pythons in this photo. And I'm not going to say much more. As you listen to this presentation, you'll figure out and find out why the pythons are important in this photo. As Wikipedia reaches maturity, Celebrating its 21st birthday this coming year, don't you think it's time to consider its adulthood? Results from our research of these 175 students, which did use that simulated set of Google search results to see how students select and judge resources for a research project, suggest we should. Since its birth, students have been generally discouraged from using Wikipedia. But as this collaborative reference tool has evolved, so should our consideration of its value. We call this Wikipedia shaming. Now, this is not new. On this slide, you see a quote, and you see the term, the learning black market. This is a term that we coined in our Digital Visitors and Residents study, which took place from 2011 to 2014, and that was funded by JISC in the UK. And we learned very similar things then as we did for this study. As you see in this quote from a US female undergraduate student age 19, and a political science major say, it's like a taboo, I guess, with all teachers. They just all say, you know, when they explain the paper, they always say, don't use Wikipedia. Now, we heard many quotes like this in the study. Here's another one from a U.S. undergraduate student, a male, age 18, and an engineering major. He said, I go to Wikipedia, scroll down to the bottom, and there's like references that Wikipedia used. And I click on those references and like check those links. Cause I'm like, that's the fastest way to find a good link. Cause like, if I'm gonna search like, I don't know, heart attack cases or something, like that's gonna take me to forever to find like a good website or book to talk about what I'm looking for when I can just type in Wikipedia, like heart attacks or something. Scroll to the bottom, there's already books and websites there for me. And this is something we heard quite a bit. I am now going to turn it over to my colleague, Chris Sear, to talk about our data collection and analysis for this project. Chris? 
Thank you, Lynn. We examined the behaviors and choices of 175 student participants across six educational stages as they engaged in four tasks in response to a grade appropriate science research prompt. Participants were presented with simulated Google search results and asked to assess whether these resources would be helpful in their research, whether they would be worth citing in their final assignment, how credible they were on a five-point Likert scale, and what container they were. By sequencing these judgments, we encourage students to reveal nuances in their assessment of resources and the different ways that they might use those resources. Here, we can see a video of the beginning of the simulation. As you can see, it was designed to replicate the look and feel of a Google search. Each cohort received a slightly different research prompt tailored to a typical assignment that they might receive at their education level. All of them dealt broadly with the topic of Burmese pythons in South Florida. Regardless of what search term they used, participants within each cohort saw the same set of results in the same order. The cohorts, however, saw a somewhat different set of search results from other cohorts. Some resources appeared for only one cohort, while others appeared for everyone. Participants could click into each result and see them just as if they were a normal web page. An interviewer prompted students to talk about their choices as they reviewed each resource. This gave us rich qualitative and quantitative data on both search behavior and the criteria that they used to evaluate resources. The first task was the helpful task, which asked students to select the resources that they considered helpful to address their research prompt. The site task displayed the resources that participants selected as helpful and asked them whether they considered those resources to be citable. The credible task asked them to select how credible the resources were, once again, along the resources that they selected as helpful. And the container task asked participants to select the best category to identify the resources container from eight possible choices. One of the resources that every cohort saw near the top of the results page was a Wikipedia page on Burmese pythons in South Florida. This was one of the most popular resources, which probably is not surprising. And because so many participants across all cohorts saw it, we could make some interesting comparisons across cohorts. Here we have a chart of the percent of students at each cohort that selected the Wikipedia resource during the helpful task. We can see that students in higher educational cohorts are more likely to select Wikipedia as a resource that would be helpful. Only about a quarter of elementary schoolers selected it as helpful, but more than 80% of graduate students did. We can also see the percent among students in each cohort who selected it as helpful that said they would cite the Wikipedia resource in a research paper. And here we can see the exact opposite relationship from before. Those in higher cohorts, even though they were more likely to select Wikipedia as helpful, were less likely to say that they would cite it in a research paper. This shows that more experienced scholars are using Wikipedia, while younger scholars are more reluctant to use it. At the same time, experienced scholars seem reluctant to acknowledge that it's part of their research process. Why might this be the case? One common explanation for why people do not want to user cite Wikipedia is its open contribution model. The majority of participants mentioned this when discussing the Wikipedia resource during the simulation, usually saying something along the lines of, quote, anyone can just write something on it, end quote. Many even mentioned this as a reason for not wanting to use Wikipedia, saying that teachers told them not to use it because of its contribution model. One might think that this is a reason that many researchers are hesitant to use or cite Wikipedia, but our results do not provide any evidence that this is the case. Participants who mentioned the contribution model were neither more nor less likely to select the Wikipedia resource as helpful or citable than those who did not mention it. If this contribution model does not account for attitudes towards Wikipedia, what does? To answer this question, I'm going to turn things over to Rachel, who's going to go into more detail about this. Thanks, Chris. As mentioned, each participant was asked to speak aloud and tell us anything that they were thinking while looking at the results from their simulated Google search. Before we take a look at what the students had to say, here's what one university professor, 
from our advisory council had to say about Wikipedia's usefulness. They said, I have high confidence in the material because I know that the people who contribute, I'm one, as are my students, are often quite well versed in the subject. Most importantly, the changes are transparent. I can look through the history to read the discussion much the way I can in open peer reviews. While this professor discusses evaluation at the article level, most of our student participants heuristically judge the helpfulness and citability of a resource at the brand or source level. The New York Times, Time, National Geographic, Springer Journals, and Gale resources have well-recognized brand names and reputations that influence student credibility judgments. At the fourth and fifth grade stage, note the binary approach. For many of these intermediate students, Wikipedia is simply bad. And there's confusion over both container type and information type. Wikipedia's openness leads a number of students to categorize it as a blog. A smaller number of elementary students see Wikipedia as a starting point to discover additional content. One elementary school student told us, Wikipedia, which isn't very factual because of what I've heard and what my teachers have been saying, I think it's more of a preprint. Here we see confusion on the container type. Another elementary school student said, usually if it's on Wikipedia or something like that, I'd go back and search the person to see what other kind of stuff he's written, if he's good at what he does or if he's just talking about it. Here you see one of that small number of students who's starting to discover um, Wikipedia as a starting point. At the middle school stage, students continue to resist Wikipedia use, perhaps even more ardently. Adults have advised these students not to use it, and students fear that should they use it, they will suffer grading consequences. One middle school student told us, so Wikipedia I would not put in because my teachers would probably make, they would probably take off points for using Wikipedia. So here you see fear of using it for fear of getting a bad grade. At the high school stage, we begin to see more open acknowledgement about the usefulness of Wikipedia, as well as more balanced and nuanced thinking about its limitations, the norms of its editing process, and the notion of research workflow. Students might not cite it, but they admit to using it. We begin to see students talking openly about the bad rap they perceive Wikipedia has gotten throughout their earlier school research experience. One high school student told us, so that's always kind of a crapshoot when you're going for just Wikipedia. The main thing you're going to look for is whether or not it actually has sources. Another of our high school participants told us, we've been told since like third grade, don't go to just Wikipedia. Wikipedia is good for overview information. At the community college stage, there's a clear acknowledgement of the regular use of Wikipedia as a resource and an understanding of its value for references, getting up to speed on new areas of knowledge, as well as a recognition of the need to cite alternate academic sources in their writing. This is the point at which several participants described what might be best described as Wikipedia shaming. Our research team connects these confessional statements to prevalent comments from the visitor and resident study where participants referenced what the researchers there labeled as the learning black market. Students admitted using Wikipedia for their academic work, but avoided citing it. One of our students said, I hate that it's shamed. I've actually found it to be really concise and kind of like a little nugget of information that allows me to explore further. And poor Wikipedia, I'm upset that people are mean about it. So here they're um, expressing that they feel this sense of shame and that people are being mean that they've used it. At the four-year college stage, our student participants continue to discuss Wikipedia as a go-to source for the usefulness of its synthesis, the niche focus of some of the articles, the value of open editing 
to promote currency and to its community regulation of errors. One of our um, undergraduate students told us, so I think I would kind of just sneak little pieces out of this Wikipedia and then follow it up with some points from Google Scholar to make sure that it's a legitimate paper or research paper. And finally, at the graduate school stage, we continue to see some sly admissions of Wikipedia use for references and the understanding that a wise Wikipedia user will always go to the source. One of the graduate student participants told us, so Wikipedia, I would not choose. Well, I'm lying. I would choose Wikipedia. I wouldn't use it as a source in my research project, but I find some interesting information. Another graduate school student told us, I came for understanding. I maybe shouldn't love it, but I love Wikipedia. As you can see, there are various stages to understanding and accepting Wikipedia as a potential resource, depending on the grade level and various levels of shame that accompanies its use. And now I will turn it over to Joyce Valenza. In real life, few of us jump into academic articles when exploring a new area of knowledge. We need context and vocabulary before we enter academic conversations. In the old days before the social web, we would advise students not to cite general encyclopedias, but we encourage the use of these tools for background knowledge as part of the workflow of inquiry. I remember old lessons where I dragged out stacks of print information types and put them on tables to lead discussion about the possible paths for research workflow. We explored the various different types of writing that might be contained within those sources. These discussions involve strategies for developing content knowledge, keeping current, using data, seeking evidence to make arguments, balancing opinion. Of course, cues about container or source type are far less obvious in digital landscapes. Ever since its launch in 2001, Wikipedia's crowdsourced authorship, its wikiness, has provoked debate relating to authority. Despite the fact that many Wikipedia authors are topic experts and that a growing number of librarians, scientists, experts, and academics contribute by adding and editing references. Beyond the brand name of a research tool, Students need to know which tools are part of the information ecosystem and how to use all of these tools potentially in their toolkits. Wikipedia has grown and morphed. For instance, in 2019, in a collaboration with Internet Archive, um, we began to see references in Wikipedia from digitized Internet Archive books available in several Wikipedia language editions. You, this works with the process of controlled digital lending or own one, loan one. So right now, researchers can go directly from a Wikipedia article, not only to websites and digitized articles online, but also directly into book sources. So in this example, I looked up Alexander Hamilton and in the references, I found several citations for Ron Chernow's biography of Hamilton, um, which was the major source for Miranda's uh, Broadway play. And I was able to get directly from those reference links into three pages of context for the book. And if I wanted to, once I was into the Internet Archive digitized book, I could, I could borrow the rest of the book in a um, own one, lend one way um, through Internet Archive. So now Wikipedia has the context of I don't know how many books, hundreds of thousands of books perhaps, as well as articles and magazines. And so those references have become even richer. Librarians get together at Wikipedia editing events or, or hackathons where they check content and add and edit references. This year's CBS News took a peek behind Wiki Project Med, a group that strictly reviews all the medical content, and noted that although companies, governments, and politicians have all tried to edit Wikipedia's entries for their own benefit, Wikipedia editors are keeping up, using computer algorithms to fight back. Confirming this, despite what, we, what has been called an infodemic, 
a recent study in MIT's qualitative science uh, studies found Wikipedia is a fundamental source of free knowledge open to all and the capacity of its editorial community to respond quickly to a crisis and provide high, high quality content is critical and it seems that they are keeping up. So what? We've always recognized the value of reference sources as part of the inquiry process. And, or but, <laughs> um, among our findings were, were, were that experts were far more likely than students to judge Wikipedia at the article level. And that means they were looking at, at, at it as a brand or a source and not bothering to check the individual article and its value and its authorship. Um, we also found that Wikipedia's helpfulness rose across educational stages, but its citability dipped, and that makes sense about a reference source. Um, we found that young students who were really all about aboutness, they cared that the article had something to do with their topic as they chose it for research. In this particular case, we're on the idea of, of assessing um, reliability and credibility. And in this particular case, it wasn't only about aboutness, but credibility, and that Wikipedia was seen as a binary good or bad, largely bad, source. We also had, across the grade levels, we, we had uh, students seem to have trouble um, identifying Wikipedia as its type of source, its context, its reference, as a reference or um, an encyclopedia. And students valued it, especially at the higher level for its uh, ability to quickly help them develop, develop critical context, discover vocabulary, and gather reference. Even so, they remained largely confessional when describing it. What our participants tell us, Wikipedia continues to be demonized. As a resource brand, it is often placed in that bucket of bad sources without a nuanced understanding of its role as an encyclopedia or tertiary or aggregated source. As we look at it, it seems that it's really not whether to use Wikipedia, but how or when. How can we help? The unwillingness of people to admit to using and perhaps even sometimes citing an, 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 a Wikipedia article, even when it might be an important source of openly available information, um, suggests that there is a disconnect between how people are taught to use Wikipedia in research and how they might actually use it. How can we help our students? We can help them consider the needs at various stages during the research process. We can help them understand the various genre of resources within the research ecosystem. We can help them consider how to, argue, how to evaluate articles at the article rather than the source level. And we can help them understand that resources evolve and that long-term heur heuristics might not serve them. And so, in a world where authority is constructed and contextual, where scholarship is a conversation, according to the ACRL frames, should the not use or non-use of Wikipedia remain a binary decision or a hidden or shameful experience? As an open reference source, Wikipedia is under continual construction just as it is subject to hacking and potential bias, it is also subject to revision, fact checks, updates, and improvement from its well-established collaborative system of editorial oversight and control. Doesn't it now deserve a seat at the adult table? And isn't it time to end the shaming? You can find um, this blog post and um, a research study from our group um, if you follow the links on these slides. And now back to Lynn. Thank you, Joyce. And thank you, Chris and Rachel, for sharing our findings today. I want to thank all of you for joining us to learn about our research. All of our presentations and papers are available on our project webpage at the URL on this slide. Follow us on Twitter and please feel free to contact us with any questions. We have included a list of resources relevant to this presentation on the next slide.
Thank you again.